Jersey between these two schools, Rutgers by seven right now. The next meeting will be at the Rack February 25th. Seton Hall at three and four. Rutgers at one and five in the Big East Conference in that West Division. Jerome Coleman, a spark as usual for Rutgers. The defense has been very aggressive today for a club that um, has been struggling. Big win against Syracuse at the rack on Wednesday. Syracuse number 24 last week. And Rutgers comes in having won three of four against Seton Hall in the series. Right now, let's take a look at Shooting the Rock, brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab a rock. Seton Hall's shooting percentage on the way up. It was at one point early in the first half at 22 percent, but about 27 percent at the right. half. And now they're uh, on their way up at 32 percent. And Rutgers wants to get Coleman involved offensively, shooting the basketball. Last few trips down the floor, though, has not touched it. Barrett has been assigned to him, trying to get him from catching the basketball, especially catching it in a spot where he can shoot from, which is a 35 and in, I guess. Oh, yeah, without question. Comfortably, too. Coleman, ninth in scoring in the Big East in the conference games. A little, bit, a little bit of a mini run by the Hall, 6-0-1 over the last 2-0-6. Guarded by Coleman. Coleman's got two fouls. It's sweet on the perimeter. Keep in mind again, Lamanzana has him. He's going right at him. Smart play. The tip is no good. He got it for a third time, and he got his travel. He traveled. He got bodied by Kareem Ray. Turnover. May have, may have had something to do with him getting moved out of there a little bit. Saw that. A little earth grader action. <laughs> Three and a half in as Tony L riding Sherrod down that far sideline picks up the foul. That'll be the third on Marcus. Picked up two here in the second half. Rutgers had a 14 point lead first half. Got it to 13 here in the second. And out by seven. Coleman trying to use Kareem right running off picks down low against Andre Barrett. Here's Kareem Wright wheeling left hand, no. And Tony L with the rebound, outlets Barrett. Barrett in a hurry, Allen on the floor, couldn't make the catch. That ball got deflected, Dave, right around the foul line area. It was a very good look for Barrett. And most people are probably thinking, why doesn't Allen catch this basketball? And it's just like in football. There was a deflection, and that's what threw it off just slightly, causing it to hit him in the chest, upper chest area. 14th turnover by Seton Hall. <laughs> Seton Hall pretty much right on average right now. Sherrod. Check that shield here, Sherrod, right now. White. Just got some freedom there. It's just a little too much, yeah. though. 13 turnovers for Rutgers. Allen with room. He needs to get down out. Oh, oh, that's man. a good play by Allen right Wasn't there. It? The defender closed so quickly. It was the only thing he had left. Yet they still turn it over on that possession. You talk about thinking while you're playing the game. Now you're right. He gets closed up and he stops right from getting the basketball. See, they called that a travel. I'm not yeah. so sure about that because he didn't have possession of that basketball. Five seed and all turnovers this half. Well, we've been sitting on this score for a while. There's your turnover score. Oh, Barrett doing a pretty good yeah, job against Coleman. He's going to say the same thing, Dave. He's just going through screens, double screens. Line drive by Shields, rebounded by Tony L. Chance to run. Allen ahead of the pack again. He makes the catch this time. Goes reverse and scores. You know what Allen's very good, Dave? Because we've seen him three times in the first half a couple of times. Catching under control. There was another example of it right there, using the one dribble. So many times you see guys try to catch in the air, throw it up, or maybe try to force it. He's willing to be comfortable, take one dribble, and find the open spot with guys running right past him. 15 for Allen. Hall closing the five again. No, long rebound. Shields is there. Shields, tough shot. Hit the side of the backboard. Allen gets it through Seton Hall. Good spot. Seton trying to get to the middle of the floor. That opens up the shot for Barrett. Barrett. We got a ball game. Nice smart by Allen just then. Don't run down the left side of the floor with the basketball. Find a way to get 
out to the middle. That's when good things will happen left and right. Barrett with a good stride under control and rhythm. Boom. All of a sudden, Gary Waters has a problem on his hands, and New York's pretty happy. Well, the Seton Hall fans said, show me, and now they make some noise. A two-point game. Ramazana trying to end an 11-0 run. Quick flip, no. Tip, no. Out of bounds. Stay here. For those of you keeping track with Seton Hall, there are only five guys on the floor right now. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to goodness, I worked that game Wednesday with Doris Burke. Everybody in the TV crew, the officials, people in the building, assistant coaches, coaches, nobody saw the six man. Yeah, I mean, it gets so tight, and it's so much congestion right now. Lamazana, a drought for Rutgers. Coleman gets it back, but they stop it to play. It's a foul against Seton Hall. Sounds like they got Andre Sweet. And Dave, you know the other thing that's interesting, if you're continuing your point right there, None of the guys on Seton Hall even figured it out. I guess six guys on the floor, you know, eventually, wait, 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 there's an extra guy here. Like somebody trying to sneak up. <laughs> you and I would both know if a third guy came into this booth right now. That's exactly right. Wigan, they leave him open. They know he's not a good shooter. Whoa. He throws it away. And participation. How about this? Seton Hall's got a chance to tie or take the lead coming up. That was the 14th Rutgers turnover. The Rutgers bench were over there looking for a deflection. They were thinking, <laughs> no, no, that wasn't deflection. No. They don't get deflected that far up. <laughs> no. Too much air on that one. Seton Hall with a three can get its first lead of the afternoon. What's the stoppage for? Do you see anything? Ball's back in play. Yeah, I'm not, no, I don't see anything at all. Yeah, look at New York. He's using his, yeah, he was using it as almost like a mini timeout just then, but Barrett's a good three-point shooter at 35%. Big East basketball from New Jersey, Continental Airlines Arena. Seton Hall looking for its first lead. Dave Sims, Jim Spinarco. They go down low. Here's Sweet, partially blocked. Taken over by Whitney. Oh, it went down and came out. Can you believe that? Man ahead of the pack. Coleman lost control. Here's Barrett back the other way. Barrett to Sweet. Allen down the lane. Spin, gave it up. Whitney in trouble. Here's Barrett, the reset. Allen, foul line pop. No, it didn't go. Kept the line by Tony Evans. Oh. Get off his own man. There weren't any points scored, but that was a pretty good 40 seconds of going up and down and aggressive basketball. And good look up the floor. Allen with the catch, one dribble, under control, and puts it in. And there's John Allen running the show. Gets one from Barrett, gives it back to Barrett, and he knocks it back. 36-34, Rutgers. Seton Hall closing in on Rutgers. The six men, they're helping just a little bit. 11.43 to go here in the second half. Dave Simpson, Jim Spinarco, and our Big East crew. Rutgers had a 36-23 lead, 17.44 to go. Now it's a two-point advantage. And they've gone 6-0-1 without a basket. Rutgers shooting 3 of 11 second half. Louis Orr's Seton Hall Ball Club shooting 5 for 12. Andre Barrett. The big three here. Not getting a lot of shot opportunities. We'll see how many he can get in the last 11 and change here going down close to the stretch. Now Seton Hall has a little bit of a momentum pickup here. We'll see if they can play off of it after the break. Barrett's key for the offense and for the defense since he's got Coleman. Coleman's hit first three field goals of the second half. Since then, Rutgers has gone 0 for 8. Make it 0 for 9. Three and right. Rebound. No question about that one. Good hustle by the big guy. Keeping it up high, too. Getting it and going. Same thing. Keep that ball away from the little guys. Don't keep bringing it down. Pretty good work on the offensive glass. Three and right with five points. A little bit of a cushion here for a Rutgers club that was up by 14 in the first half, 11 in the second. Whitney with Barrett, Allen, Sweet, and Tony L for Rutgers. I think what Seton Hall has figured out with the three fouls with Blamanzano, they are not afraid to get it down low and challenge. Joel Wigan had the steal. Allen gets it back. Allen got it off, and it went. Now this is getting pretty rugged underneath the basket right now. Allen with 17 points for the Seton Hall Pirates. That's yeah, a more great than Louis before long. 
Now this game will not go down as a real classic in terms of the way it's been played, Dave, but this looks like it's going to be a grunt and grind, though. Mm -hmm. Competitive Big East basketball for somebody who wants to go out and get a win right here. Brad thought about it. Allen makes a reset. Ten on the shot clock. Wiggins a driver. They let him play. Rebound goes to Sweet. And then off yeah. the leg of Sweet, it's going to be Rutgers' ball. May have been Coleman who had something to do with getting that ball slapped out of his hands. 16 turnovers as Damon Fry comes back, or Frey comes back, beg your pardon. Yeah, pretty good. Tony L just then get, maybe doing a little flopping, a little. Yep, good call from the officials, though. That's amazing how many they get right. Oh, yes. Will Bush on that. Coleman drives hard, baseline tip right now. Man, look at this. <laughs> Go get it. Go. That's a jump got? ball. Yes, That's sir. That's a jump ball, I bet. Frey and Wright. <laughs> Grim right 6'9, 270. Don't go in there. Frey at 6'8, 236. Don't go in there looking for a ham sandwich, Dave. <laughs> no. <laughs> Watch this next one now. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> you see that thing in a paper the other day about the competitive eating? <laughs> no. It was some guy bigger than probably Frey and Kareem put together, ate something like 20 something my big matzo balls. <laughs> no. I'm way out of my league. Wagan takes it in, draws a crowd, and here's Sweet taking over. Got to take it in stronger than that. Got a bounce on the remain Seen Hall ball. Seen Hall with a three can take its first lead. Nine thirty-seven to go, second half. Barrett beat two men. Lay up. Structure the game now to play it five feet and in, which makes a whole lot of sense on their home floor. Barrett's quick enough to get in there. No La Manzana on the floor. That is a long drop, partially blocked. It goes anyway. Sweet got a piece of that. And I'll tell you, right because of his strength, it took one and a half players at least towards the basket with him for Gary Waters company. Boy, they, you talk about a power move here. Look at his drop step, little drop step, and now, bang, he's going to start taking and looking for people to get in his way. This is where he struggles a bit at the foul line. But seven points, nine rebounds. Pretty good lift off the bench. He misses the free throw. Rector's back on top by two. Allen, quick pop, and he hits. Jim Byrne looking for help. Will Bush helps. He says it was a two. Uh, tied again at 40, 19 for Allen, enjoying an outstanding afternoon. Uh, Seen Hall's had about 10 minutes of good rhythm offensive basketball. Last five minutes or so of the first half and the last three to five minutes here. Coleman now go to by Allen. See if they can get it. Allen Long. Right. Kareem off the glass. Boy, he turns and leans that shoulder. There's no stopping. Damon Frey. Foul. His second. It's a combination of too much size and strength for Frey. He's so deep, too. Yeah. You see how deep uh, Kareem gets the ball? Right. That's why right across from us and close to Gary Waters is the next substitute coming into this game. It's going to be Kelly Whitney to try to help contain Mr. Wright down low. Not his strong suit. Kareem on the season just 44.8%. Kelly Whitney's back in. Kareem now one of four at the line. So what that tells me is you better be ready to box out and go after the ball, right? That's exactly right. Be alive. With all that said, Rutgers back hooked up by one. Drops it right in our face. There we go. Nothing fast. Andre Barrett used to getting about 13 shots a game. Got just four today. Wonderful job defensively by Rutgers. Whitley dealing, stepped in, draws a foul. And a knee injury, Kelly Whitney holding on to his right knee. We'll take a look at top 25 action. Maryland playing Loyola of Baltimore, leading candidly there. Maryland on top in the ACC. Illinois on the road at Michigan State, a five-point lead for the Illini. Well, the game's coming up later. The Ducks play at the USC Trojans. Luke Jackson, 27 against UCLA. Big one down at Tobacco Road. Wake at Carolina. Carolina got knocked off last week by uh, NC State. 
Duke playing at Florida State, scene of an upset loss a year ago. And that's coming up later on tonight. Speaking of my alma mater, I spent a little time watching the women play last night. UConn and Duke, number one and number two. Great game. UConn just blew their doors off in the first half. Sure did. Duke came flying back, but not enough. Very interesting and exciting basketball. They go on record right now. Diana Taurasi is one of my favorite yeah. players playing right now. Oh, baby, there's Coleman for three. The guy who knows he has to warm it up. Look at him clapping, getting himself going at the defensive end now. He's kind of throwing the challenge out the barrel. Let's go, let's play. 19 for Coleman. Three-point lead. Barrett penetrates. Leaner, no. Kept alive. Here's Morton. Finds back, steps back. That's a three. Won't go. Breakout. Nobody back. Here's Coleman. Coleman trying to go behind his back, and Andre Barrett fouled him. And not a bad foul, though, because you touched on it, Dave. No one back at all to see the ball. No one watching the house. And what you need to do there is you have to get a small forward or an off guard as Barrett lets that ball go in the corner. The point guard is all the way down by a baseline. The number one rule is to get somebody back on defense while that ball's in the air. First foul on Andre Barrett. Jerome Coleman, leading scorer this year and last season for the Scarlet Knights. 77% at the line. Keeps it a three-point ball game here. Coming up on 7.40 to go in regulation. Paul with 18 fouls, three for Rutgers right now. So we'll see if that plays out. It'll be an important factor as we go down the stretch. Allen, guarded by Sherrod. Gets a Morton pick. Amazon is on him. Allen raises up, trying to go glass. Morton rebound. Morton 17 against Georgetown. Uh, short shot, boy, that's the second one that Allen's had to go down and come out. Boy, the lid. All of a sudden, the lid was starting to go cold from short range, and they're just getting a little frustrated. But you got to keep reinforcing it, though, Dave. You're getting good shots of your seat. No, keep doing what you're doing. Sooner or later, they're going to go down. A couple of teams in the Big East West. Seat Hall at 3 and 4. Tied with West Virginia, surprising West Virginia. And Rutgers at 1 and 5 in last place, trying to. Tie Georgetown if they can come out of here with a win. Georgetown at two and five. Shot clock at six. Sherrod put it up. Right tip. No. Lamazana's there. He got hit. I think it's going to be Allen. Who knows it too? Yeah, Allen was he in there. So, so was Whitney. He may have gotten. I think, he, I think they got Whitney too. Whitney was in there. They were both reaching away. Whistle blew and they both turned around and looked into the stands. Yeah. Like, they give it to Whitney. So 19 fouls. Whitney's third. Andre Sweet's going to come in. Returning to Seton Hall. Hervé Lamazana from St. Patrick's High School in New Jersey and from the Ivory Coast in Africa. Four points, five boards, and three blocks. Looked like he was going to be super active. He did get those three blocks in the first half. Coming off a really good scoring game. 11 points, 14 boards against Syracuse. Been pretty quiet. 6.40 to go in regulation. And good play by Wigan. And then a foul by Whitney, his fourth. Oh, that's a killer. As Wigan had gotten it off the steal. And Kelly Whitney banged him. So that's his fourth. That comes at 6.38. That's going to be critical for Seton Hall. Plus the real problem was with the Tony L entry pass too. That's the one that was a lazy pass. It was telegraphed. It was deflected. And that's where Whitney then tries to bail out a teammate and make up for a mistake. You know, just a tough break for Seton Hall right there because they need his inside presence in this basketball game because Wright and Lamazana are just too, too big and too tall down low. Wigan 67% at the line. Coleman getting a blow right now. Damon Frey returns, as does Donald Copeland for Tony Ellen Whitney. Four-point lead for Rutgers. Wigan, a real physical defensive player, coming up big here. A couple of free throws. They give Rutgers a five-point lead. Jerome Coleman. Very crucial in this little bit of a run by Rutgers to get some separation from the hall. Five in this battle of New Jersey, 6.38 to go. Here in regulation, and fans to get more information on your favorite Big East team, go online at www.bigeast.org for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big East. Biggest tournament as we look ahead about five weeks and change from now. We'll be 
<laughs> He's scintillating He's again. Closing quickly. I know. Then we just have opening day for Crenshaw. It feels like. <laughs> Where is the time going? Boy. Donald Copeland running the point right now for Seton Hall, working with Barrett. Andre Sweet, Frey, and Allen. Barrett inside. Tough drive. And it goes. Finally getting one to work with the rim rather than against it. So quick. Can really slice through the lane, split the seams. A couple of guys knew he was coming towards him. They just can't stop him with that. 12 for Barrett. Wooten's in the game. Wooten, Wigan, right with Sherrod and Lamazana. Six minutes to go, second half. Seton Hall has yet to lead in this game. Six on the shot clock, Sherrod in trouble. He knows it, too. Yeah. Oh, Trump, in this game. Oof. Raises up, got the rim. Allen, nice rebound. He fought off Wigan. Barrett. Look at how low he keeps that ball to the floor. It's a good thing, too. There's Allen looking for some room. Get it back to Copeland. Good matchup here. Ooh, pretty good defender. They're just exchanging so Barrett can get the ball with some rhythm. Rim right and bumped it. Got him with that left arm down. Gary Waters with a pained expression on his face. Now it just breeds the question, Dave. Do you really think Wright is going to take that ball off of Barrett? How low he keeps it to the floor? <laughs> Slim and none left town right. a while ago. Uh, he's going to challenge him in certain areas. Don't go to Barrett's strength. Good reaction in the second half, huh? Yes. Second foul on Kareem Wright. Only four on Rutgers at this point in the basketball game. Shooting double bonus. Allen working hard. Got rid of it. Sweet. Steps in. Lines the open man. Trying to put the ball on the floor with the purpose. Nice job by Sweet. Bring somebody out to defend you. They come out. They're standing up. You lock their legs and go right by them. First field goal today for Kelly Whitney, who's averaging just under 11 points a game. Ball down one again. Seton Hall has not led today. Ramazana playing with three fouls. Going against Sweet. Long jump hook. In and out. Kept alive. And Ramazana ends up with it. Coleman dials a three. Short rebound. Copeland. Let's see if Copeland goes under control right here. Good decision. Allen for three in the lead. At least three. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Great activity. Sure was. Terrific activity. And Barrett's still on the floor, slow to get up. Hope he didn't strain anything because that's a great look for Allen. Nice pass by Copeland. Now watch Rutgers going after the ball. Just can't pull their bodies to the point of catching up to the basketball. That's three shots today that Andre Barrett is taking. He's tough. Got hit up around the head. He got it just hammered in the, in the chest in the first half. And now this one. Coming up on four minutes to go. Very low scoring game. Right. What do we got? Offensive foul. Uh, good work right there along the baseline. That could have been Whitney's fifth, too. Right. He stayed away pretty well. I thought there was a touch of his shoulder by Wright that caused the problem for him. Kareem's third, team fifth. Let's see if that left shoulder goes down. In a little bit, you know, Whitney had the established position. You just can't run over a defender. So a chance for the lead again. Allen's got to be thinking, what does he have to do? A good three, maybe four shots go down and come out from in tight. Coleman takes it away from Barrett. Sherrod back the other way. Coleman far side didn't see him. And he banged it off his foot. His foot. Let's see. Yes, indeed. It's going to be seen off ball. It went off the Sherrod's foot. And Gary Waters' face. What more do you need to add to that? And you know what? He knew it because he, had, he was in pretty good position to see that one. You know who else was? Will Bush was right where he's supposed to be as an official. 3.40 to go. Rutgers hanging to a one-point lead. Did you miss the latest on angles? Sometimes you just tough it out and, and uh, 
you got to put it behind you. I mean, if you're not tough enough to get by, you're not tough enough to compete at this level. The New Jersey Devils play playoff hockey all year. Right now, my knee is not where it needs to be yet. It's got to be a distraction for Joe Torrey, and it's going to be a distraction for those players. They're going to be a favorite. Yeah, this is not going to be the little old Jets that can't. It's either win everything or I'm miserable. Al Troutwood covers all the angles tonight at 1030 on MSG. Today's Big East basketball game is being brought to you by BMW. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. They're both from the outside, Continental Airlines are in it. Inside, Dave Sims, Jim Spinarkle. Heated Big East contest, Rutgers, which has led all day, trying to hold off Seton Hall. Closest the Hall has gotten. They had a couple of ties, but they have a chance now to take the lead. 14-point margin for Rutgers in the first half. They led by 11 here in the second. Andre Barrett, scrappy Pirates of Louis Orr hanging in there. Well, Louis Orr knows that he is going to have a tough three minutes and 40 seconds on his hands right now. The key becomes Barrett's decisions with the basketball, not necessarily his shots, but getting good shots for his teammates also. See Hall win gets him the 500 in conference play. First look was to post up down low and get Whitney the basketball. Failed, let's see if they try it again. He wants the basketball. Allen stumbles and turns it over. Sherrod with a man back. Sherrod goes up off the glass. Offense. Oh, what do we got? We got, they're going to give him both. Offensive right. foul and a bucket. Jim Burr with the call. And Sweet went down hard. Sweet really worked his way. Now, this is one of those calls. Do you give the offensive guy credit for getting to that spot? See, I'm, that's a tough one. That's one of the toughest calls in basketball, I think. See if he's moving in. You know, Dave, I, I think it's the right call from the official, but I disagree with the rule. It's got one yeah. or the other. Right, exactly. I just think the offensive player is being penalized there in that spot. I think Jim Burr did a good job of analyzing and making the right call the way the rule is structured right now. Sherrod's got six points. That was his third foul. Allen, all down three. That one goes. Funny how they have to use that rim entirely, doesn't it? I mean, the last couple of buckets, they've been hanging up there, hanging, hanging. Finally, they go in for it. Allen's been very steady. 21 points today. And their go-to guy. A point game again. It's amazing. Here we are, almost two and a half to go, and we haven't hit 50 yet. Ramazana. Want to go a little spin to the baseline. Not there. Shirai threw it up. Air ball taken out by Whitney. Whitney. Hands to Barrett. The guess is that Whitney's going to be around the basketball a lot in this last two minutes or so. They go to Sweet against Lamazana, playing with fouls. Lean or no, kept the lock. Sweet's got it. Recognize. Nice pass. Sure was. Allen, mid-range game, puts the ball on the lead for the first time this afternoon. A terrific diagonal pass by Sweet. What did it allow Allen to do? It allowed him to get his rhythm as the ball was coming towards him. He could see it. Step and shoot. That's the way to shoot a basketball with confidence. 23 for John Allen. Clock running short. A buck 50 to go. Coleman off his foot. Allen controls. There's Seaton Hall. Allen takes it in. Finger roll, but he'll shoot a couple. Almost <laughs> runs over Jimmy Burr. I love the way Allen plays under control. I mean, we've said that a bunch, but he really does an outstanding job of that. Right, and here's an example of it. Coleman gets, I think it kicks off his own foot. Now watch Allen, a little bit of traffic, still reading it. That foul was outside, so that was not going to count, even if that basketball went through the hoop. Allen, a 69% free throw shooter. 16th in scoring in conference play, 15-6. Well over that today, and 14th in defensive rebound. Two-point lead. And that was obviously the seventh foul on Rutgers out. So look at those numbers. Steady and, and dependable. So John Allen gives Seton Hall a three-point lead with 1.40 to go in the second half. Seton Hall trying to get the four and four in conference play. Rutgers at one and five trying to get out of the cellar. Lamazana. You would think they'd want Coleman touching this basketball at some point. Shields a deep three. Rebound, Tony L. One of the things, Gary Wall was scratching the head right there. 
That has been a nemesis, I think. The long shots. I know you're down three points, but my way of thinking, Dave, is get the ball inside, go towards the basket. You get a lifetime on that clock. It's not one possession just then. Seen Hall on a 10-2 run. Filling some clock right now. Allen and Barrett. 11 on the shot clock, we're under a minute to play. Barrett puts it in motion, gets down low, foul Rutgers. Slowing it down, they get away with it. Sometimes it takes you off your rhythm, but when you have a guy like Barrett who can break people down off the dribble, it's kind of like the little old four corners that Dean Smith used to throw at us back in the Carolina Duke days. Let's take a look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. 55.2 seconds to go. It was just a few seconds ago. John Allen taking it down. With the drive off the off the pull-up. And that last foul was on Jerome Coleman. And that shot gave Seton Hall its first lead today. 51-48. Seton Hall's won eight of the last nine here at Continental Airlines Arena. Rutgers has won three of the last four in the series. Barrett's got 12. Two for two at the line, four of eight from the field, and five assists. Crowd of 10,137 watching. Another spirited contest here in the Big East. And an added dimension of two big universities in New Jersey going after each other. Both teams have a timeout remaining. This crowd sat on its hands for pretty much most of the day. Also, it's a predominant by obviously Seton Hall crowd. Come to life here with the Pirates taking the lead here in the latter stages of the game. Yeah, I think two things played into that, Dave. I think the tone of the game did because it was, uh, you know, I never got really into a good rhythm basketball-wise, exactly. and their team was losing most of the day. And Rutgers had chokeholds on them defensively. They did an outstanding job. Talk about John Allen. The one thing you think about him, under control and around the basket. And looking for opportunities down the stretch, too. So I like his confidence, not only in shooting the basketball. This one was a great pass by Sweet with the go-ahead bucket. And here he is under control, going towards the basket. Nice afternoon all around. He's got the scoring credentials, having beaten uh, Richard Hamilton's high school records at Coatesville High School, just west of Philadelphia. 11 of 21 from the field, four boards. With 55 2 to go. Rutgers is going to bring out Sherrod Coleman, Wright, Lamazana, and Shields. For Seton Hall, it's Whitney playing with four fouls. Morton, Barrett, Allen, and Tony L. Barrett about 84% from the line. Nice guy to have on the line. It's a good combination. Point guard and a free throw shooter. Hangs down the first one. Seton Hall in conference play at 67% at the line as a team. And Darren's coming off a 21-point performance at Georgetown. So important, Dave, to have your point guard to be able to handle the basketball at the end of the game and be a good free throw shooter. Biggest lead of the afternoon by the Seton Hall Pirates. Dave Sims, Jim Spinocco with the Big East basketball. They go down low. Lamazana with a jam. Real good smarts, though, Dave. A lot of teams start pumping long shots up. Now Gary Waters is just going to play the clock. Lamazana with six points tonight. And it's a three-point game. Many times... Players will start to think, oh, we're down five points, less than a minute. Let me shoot the ball long range. Good smarts. Get it going towards the basket finish. Defensively, players shy away because they don't want to commit a foul here and go for the three-point conventional. So smart basketball. Now they have a stop. Still a 10-second differential on the clocks. But you got to cover a lot of mileage right now. Rutgers cannot stop the clock again. Seton Hall has one more remaining. 45-9 to go. Rutgers trying to end a seven-game conference road losing streak. That last win, Jan 27th of a year ago at West Virginia. Last two seasons, Rutgers just brutal on the road. Two and 13 in conference play. That other one was at Seton Hall, Feb 4, 2001. Now you think of the guys on the floor right now, Dave. The one thing I'm thinking if I'm Rutgers, you're down. 53-50. Who's going to catch this ball? They're going to. Seton Hall is going to try to get it to Barrett. You got to go for a quick steal here. They go long. It's a progress. Oh, Tony L's got it. 
Morton. I believe he did. And he got the lead. They have stepped back court. And now I'm not sure if he had possession in the front court. Five points. The deficit for Rutgers. 14-4, Seton Hall on Coleman. Trying to get it back. No rebound. Taken away, but a foul. Rebound by Sweet. What a big rebound by Andre Sweet out of Feather Race High School in Manhattan. It was a high school teammate with Andre Barrett. He's got a chance to pretty much put this one away. And Seton Hall taking over. Let's see what happens. One. Oh, baby. That's backcourt, isn't it? Oh, he's in the air, though. Never okay. established himself. But I thought his, first, but his back foot was it. Got to get came down over. first. Okay. Because he's catching that and coming back. Sure. He's in the okay. air. And I'm pretty sure he's okay with that. Splitting the line. Andre Sweet. Big spot for him. 67%. First trip to the line today. In and out. Shirai. I didn't know if that was one on one or two. That's why there's a hesitation. Oh, he banked it. He banked it just like he did against Syracuse on Wednesday. They stopped the clock with a foul. Irve makes it a two point game. Flashback City. My goodness. <laughs> Using it all, big fella. Irve Lamazana with another three, his 12th of the season, goes glass. That is almost exactly where the shot was taken against Syracuse the other night to beat Jimmy Beheim's squad. How big are these free throws now? You've got Greg Morton just 70, he's 73%, he's two for two today. Rutgers still has a life. They bring back Shields. We'll revisit what he did, what Lamazana did Wednesday Lamazana, at the rack. Shirad. Check this out. Shot clock at five. Is Three that, by Sharada. Yes, that was glass, folks. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Morton got one out of two. 19-4 to go. Seton Hall uses its last time out. Gary Waters and company cannot stop the clock. So they're down three, length of the court to go. This is the NBA, they'd get it at midcourt, but they have 94 to go. What do you look for here from uh, yeah. Gary Waters and company? You know, Dave, you have plenty of time right here. I know we, I know the score, you're down three. 19.4 seconds left with the guard play that Rutgers has right now. You have the ability to take this ball one more time right to the basket and try to get an easy layup and hope there's about 14 seconds left on the clock and you're only down one at that particular point. You come back and foul again, put Seton Hall on the line again, because I just think now a lot of people look at this situation and they say, I'm down three, 19 seconds left, I'm gonna take a three. If you miss and don't get that ball back, game is pretty much over on one free throw because it's a two possession game. Right. I'd like to see one of them drive right to the basket with the basketball right here. Big spot here for these two clubs. The 500 in Big East play. Trying to win their second straight game. See, Dave, I think Louis Orr has the toughest decision right here. He might be thinking, well, do I want to go up full court and pressure? But the Rutgers squad with their three perimeter guys who can all handle the ball, one of them goes blowing by you, then you really have problems coming down the other end of the floor. So I wouldn't be surprised, Louis Orr, to see them pick him up just at half court and pick him up hard there. Rutgers five of 17 from three-point range, Seton Hall three of seven. Neither team can stop the clock. 19.4 seconds to go. Rutgers won three of the last four in this series, but Seton Hall's won eight of nine here at Continental Airlines Arena. Rutgers with a win with Ty Georgetown in the Big East West Division. For sixth place. Scarlet Knights currently in last place. Here we go, Lamazana will inbound. All right, they better get the ball clean. Wiggins, oh man, barely is able to hold on. Here's Sherrod, the three-point game. The slower they go, the more it sets up for a three. Looks like they're setting up for the three. 10 seconds over the top, Shields. No, rebound, and a foul, as Sweet got the board. Back rim was Shields. On that deep three, he was a 40% shooter from three-point range. And he got back rim that time, six seconds to go. 
Certainly had a very good uh, eyeball here. Yeah, good eyeball, but still defensively, Seton Hall was running at him. And here's the game of percentages, though, Dave. Now all of a sudden it comes down if there's one shot here, one shot puts you out of this basketball game, really. Even though I'm hesitant to say that after watching Pitt and Syracuse. <laughs> yes, exactly <last> right. <laughs> Sherrod fouled out on that last play with six points. It sends Andre Sweet to the line. Sweet 67%, 0 for 1 this evening. Calvin Wooten has come in. He replaces Mike Sherrod. Andre Sweet, the transfer from Duke. Three time All City performer. Here's Sweet. First free throws down. Ten boards today for Andre Sweet coming off the bench. Four point lead with six seconds to go. You would. Gotta like the chances here. If he knocks this one down, it's yeah, definitely it's, it's two possessions anyway. Andre Sweet, a couple of big free throws. They don't even have to play defense. No, just stay out of the way. Let him go. Wiggins gonna take it all the way and get the eye. Blew the layup. That's gonna do it. Seaton Hall is now 500 in Big East play. They go to four and four with a 58-53 win here over the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Seton Hall goes to 9-9 nine and nine overall, 4-4 four four in the conference. Rutgers goes to 9-10, 2-1-6 in the league. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.